Hello and welcome to our second bee video. We have now received our bees and therefore technically a beekeeper, albeit a noob beekeeper. I have set up a CCTV camera so I can see what's going on at the front of the hive. I didn't get this set up until day five after arrival, but as you can see, they're being quite optimistic and determined flying in and out. In this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts on starting up and installing the new colony, plus a couple of what the fudge moments. It always seems to be mentioned that you should join a local club I tried, but the email failed. But not to worry, not being in a club is not an issue. This is the age of Google and YouTube. However, there is one question you need to ask yourself. How many hives do you think you will be keeping? Sensibly, you will start with one colony, but in practical terms, depending where you live, winter can be a big killer, and there are diseases, pesticides, old age, all taking their toll. Realistically, you should be considering replicating to several hives so you don't get wiped out. As a noob beekeeper, I have found that beekeeping is about planning, preparing months ahead. In the UK, orders for a colony start to be taken at the end of the year for May collection or delivery. But first, get yourself a beehive, so you know its physical dimensions and limitations. I have now noticed my fly hive roof has no ventilation, and I suspect most hives you buy don't have either. As the weather is warming up, this is a problem we're going to have to look at. Now, back to where we were. Make one, two, or even three copies of your hive before you get your bees. You never know when a swarm may turn up. A colony can get quite can grow quite quickly, and it's best to be prepared to add an extra brood box or split a hive so your bees don't get end up swarming too. Let's have a what the fudge moment. With the CCTV on, I found this and was absolutely shocked. I thought the hive was being raided and robbed out. I mean, this is a hell of a lot more bees than normal. Looking back on the recordings, I found it happens every day from about 2.30pm for 40 to 60 minutes before going back to normal. I should also mention that the CCTV time is actually one hour behind. What I think is actually happening is that as the morning progresses and the light reaches maximum, plant photosynthesis reaches maximum, and I must confess I have no idea how a plant controls the flow of sugar to its flowers, but by midday I'm guessing the amount of nectar in the flowers is at its peak and also the replenishment, which of course the bees are exploiting by foraging more. This causes the equivalent of a bee rush hour. If your hive also behaves the same, then if you want to do a hive inspection, the best time would be prior to this rush hour, so there will be less bees in the way. Installing a colony. As a YouTube trained beekeeper, it all looks pretty simple. Basically, open the box, spray with sugar water, check for the queen, place frames in the hive, close up. Easy. Unfortunately, this happy event wasn't recorded. As the veil does reduce visibility a bit, and especially on an LED screen in sunlight. Anyway, as my first encounter with bees, I found wearing the bee suit an enormous confidence booster, allowing me to concentrate on the job. On reflection, I also found that the bees were not very aggressive at all. I was expecting them to be stressed and more angry, but I think the reverse happens. They haven't been able to get out of their hive. They have endured a lot of movement and vibration, travelling, and when they get to fly out, all the surroundings don't, they don't recognise. It may vary from one colony to another, but I think mine were just utterly confused. The only angry buzzing I got was when taking off the lid, so I slowed down and found a bit of comb on the frames and on the box lid, so maybe this was what was upsetting them. Inside the lid, there were two clusters of about 100 bees, so I put the lid on top of the new frames in the uh, brood box. Not having a sprayer, I sprinkled some sugar water, drops over the frames, which kept some of the bees busy. I then took out each frame, but couldn't see the queen, and there was only about 50 to 100 bees on each side of each frame. I thought it would be best just to get the bees into the hive, rather than try to find the queen. So, put the frames in the same order, tapped off the lid over the hive to get them off and put on the crown board and the feeder. In the travel box there was a second inner wall to hold up the frames. There seemed to be a lot of bees down those inner walls. I guess they were feeling more secure down the gap. On the floor of the box there was a two six inch pieces of loose wood which may have been a contributory factor to the 20 30 odd dead bees there. So not wanting to tip a load of dead bees into the hive I just left it at the front. And I guess I would say there was only one, one and a half thousand bees in the coal colony. 
When the box arrived in my shop, there was one bee coming out from under the tape. By the time I got it through to the storeroom and the back door, there was a cluster of about 12 bees on the outside of the box. How many escaped during transit, we will never know. But I'm sure glad I didn't go to collect them from the supplier. That would have been an epic experience. Well, for the rest of the day, there was a lot of bees flying around the hive, but the next morning they seemed to have got themselves sorted out, and there was just the odd one flying in and out. The next day, as you can see, not many bees. I checked the feeder, which they weren't using, and put the roof back. Then I had my first what the fudge moment. A single bee flies up to about four inches in front of my face, buzzing. So I took a couple of steps back, and she follows, hovering four inches in front of my face still buzzing at me. Well, as I was finished I went back to go down the ladder uh, with this bee buzzing after me and I thought i have just been faced off by one single bee. It's a good job we know who's boss here. Only two last things to mention. In hindsight I should have had some vinyl gloves on under the leather ones as handling frames with leather gloves is quite a bit harder. With so few bees about I could have taken the leather gloves off and you can feel a lot better what you are holding with your spinal gloves on. The other point is if this is your first encounter with bees like me, I would also warn you the full frames are amazingly heavy. For bee number three I will discuss painting your hive and hive inspections. These haven't gone very well so maybe we'll just do feeding instead, but subscribe and come back later.